Catwoman strikes out on her own after the mess that was the Bat and Cat wedding, but damn, doesn't she look good? I'm Stan, and this is Detail Comics. What's up, everybody? This is an iRay review, the show where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions, and let you know whether it's something you should go back to the comic book shop for or not. In this video, we're going to be going over Catwoman number one, which is written and illustrated by Joelle Jones and colored by Laura Allred. Fans have been clamoring for another Catwoman book ever since Tom King brought her into DC Rebirth during Batman number nine, which kicked off the I Am Suicide arc. But we're not here to talk about Bat and Cat, which will be done plenty in the Batman number 50 video. We're here to go over Catwoman number one and what this free and feisty feline does when left to her own devices. This issue kicks off with parallel storylines that are happening at the same time. While the opening splash of Catwoman is great, the next few pages take a turbulent turn as they introduce multiple elements. We are led to believe that these things are happening in real time, so the cat that shot the cop isn't Selina. Instead, she is in some kind of Chinese gambling den, taking the money of other men at the same time a news broadcast showing the governor and his wife plays out somewhere else. Initially, Jones takes the page layout and crams everything together in a way that feels noisy and overfull. It's hard to separate what is important from what is window dressing. As the page count continues to grow, things become a little less turbulent and the main veins of the story start to emerge. Selene is distraught over what happened with Bruce and hasn't slept in ages. The governor's wife is putting on a face for the cameras, deflecting a deeper look into some possibly shady business. An imposter races across the rooftops with a recent score and racks up a body count of two more dead police officers. If you were expecting a more traditional layout or to be fed these storylines in these opening pages, you might be disappointed. But when everything comes into clear relief, when Selena is confronted by the police as she leaves the gambling parlor, someone is setting her up and things just got serious. After the initial chaos of throwing the storylines in a mixing bowl and spreading them across the page, Joelle Jones tightens up quickly, bringing the glamorous Selena Kyle face to face with the business end of an officer's pistol. But he's no match for Catwoman. The chase scene that follows lacks almost any words, which just makes the pace feel faster. And while it might be ridiculous, the somersault into the subway car is very on brand for Catwoman. Two out of the three storylines have collided, but what about the third? As we examine the post-interview process for the governor's wife, now known as Raina Creel, it's immediately apparent that she is the boss of this operation and her husband isn't much more than a pretty face and a position of power that she keeps as a trophy. But a pretty face isn't something you'd use to describe Raina. As she begins the methodical process of removing her wig, her contacts, those fake-ass eyelashes, her teeth, and even her nose. Joelle Jones has said that so many female villains are beautiful, which made her want to create something grotesque. Based on what she did here, I think she succeeded. As the following pages play out, we find out that not only is she the power behind the office, but she runs the criminal organization with the help of her two sons, and is also responsible for the fake Catwoman. We can just ignore the fact that she's also swapping blood with a much younger woman like she's trying to suck the fucking life out of her. I don't like this chick at all. Bouncing back to Selena after her acrobatic escape, she swings into a pawn shop that appears to be one of her safe spaces, or at least the home of someone she can trust, linked to a self-storage facility. She gathers her pride of stray cats, and she makes her way into what looks like tonight's sleeping quarters. However, there in the cramped space and amongst hundreds, if not thousands of stolen goods, she finds a gift, something that she hadn't taken, but was something that was given back to her. As she opens the package to find that Alfred has folded, packaged, and delivered her cat suit, whip, and goggles with a note, I'll be damned if this wasn't one of the best and most genuine moments of the book. Alfred, being the boss that he is, gives Selena her things and an assurance that both he and Bruce are thinking of her. It implies that they know where she is, but her space is being respected. It shows that there is care there, where she always found none anywhere else. No wonder she instantly breaks into tears and throws a fit before collapsing on the ground. That happy life as a happy wife is what she gave up to give the world the Batman they deserve. What a punch in the fucking gut. However, Selena knows what to do, especially when someone is out there trying to use your image or ruin it. She puts her new costume on and takes off into the dark night trying to find the one responsible, which doesn't really take long. Another fast-paced action scene running across the rooftops, we finally get to the meat of the issue, which is the final page reveal. This little kitten isn't the only one using Selena's image. There's a whole litter of strays stealing her name, her look, and whatever Raina Creel orders them to steal. When we look back at this, it feels like learning to ride a bicycle. While in the beginning it takes some time to take all the pieces and put them together, the pedaling, the balance, the steering, it's all new and fresh, but after a little time, when you start to pick up speed, things become more natural and the feeling changes. 
With Joelle Jones on Catwoman, you knew that the art was going to be excellent. Based on the work that she did inside the Batman series, there was no question that Selina would be gorgeous, the action would be strong, and everything would come together. However, I was unsure about the storytelling aspect of the book. Coming off the monumental event that was Batman number 50, Catwoman number one needed to start strong, with a hook that could easily justify its existence not only to DC, but to fans as well. If we judge it simply on those merits, I think that Catwoman number one succeeds in a big way. We see the carryover of the relationship with Bruce and how it impacts her, but there's a world outside of Batman, and right now she just jumped headfirst into something that may have been going on right under her nose. The front end of the issue felt a little chaotic, which paralleled with the thoughts in Selina's mind, but the journey looks like it's going to be worth it. I also need to sing the praises of Laura Allred since she did the color for this book. The combination of the two feels natural, even though things are a bit flatter when compared to the work Jordi Belair did with Jones on the main series. I don't know if fans will flock to it, but Catwoman number one is a great first issue, and I feel like fans won't be disappointed when they pick it up. If the series can continue to show Selina's struggle while away from Bruce, but keep her in control of her own life, fighting her own battles and her own villains, it will be a really good title to follow. That being said, I want to know what you guys thought of Catwoman number one. Do you feel that things are off and running in the right direction? Is Jones the correct creator to take Selina solo? Is the cat still fun without the bat? Let me know in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything having to do with the world of comics.